But that is nothing to do with the Quran. That is to do with that society and indeed uh, that particular uh, government. In the religion, there's no compunction. Islam was never spread by the sword, but by the heart and by understanding. And I'm sure the ladies here today are dying to know why we wear black. One final way in which a lady will cover is where they take the bottom of the scarf, the shayla, and completely cover it over their face. And this is called the gashwa. And funnily enough, I wear the one that Latifa was wearing before when I'm outside of the, uh, the mosque and out and about. And Latifa wears this one. Do you want to share why you wear this one? Yeah, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, I do actually use this as my sunblock. If I've left the house and forgot my sunglasses, what I'm always doing, and I need to go in the sun. We're going to actually start the wash by washing the hands three times. I hope it's not too cold. <laughs> And then that would be followed by rinsing the mouth also three times. What you do is just put the water inside and then spit it out, but not the person next to you. <laughs> so I'd like to thank our volunteers. Thanks ever so much, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like to help yourself to a small towel there. Okay, so let's get back onto the mosque now. But before we go on inside, could everyone please kindly remove your shoes? You can keep your socks on, it is just your shoes. So if you'd like to head on back over. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to come and sit down. Now, Islam is built on five pillars. The five pillars of Islam. Now, the first pillar of Islam is actually Shahada. And this is a testimony, the declaration of faith. We also believe in all the other religions of God and the other prophets of God, from Prophet David, Moses, Jesus, Abraham. We have to believe in all those other prophets and the other religions of God to even call ourselves Muslim. Now the second pillar of Islam is Salah. Salah means prayer. If you just look over here, you can see this digital clock thing. Now who thought that was today's exchange rates? Yeah, good, good dollar rate that is. <laughs> yeah. He's a king. He's a riffraff. No offence, sir. This lady's a queen. This lady's homeless. But when they're standing there all together, all them differences disappear and they all become equal. Because in God's eyes, we are all equal. Now moving on to that third pillar of Islam, Amel. The third pillar of Islam is zakah. And zakah means charity. And every Muslim who's able to is asked to give a certain amount in their uh, from their money in the form of charity. Now, when they've met their obligations, credit card bills, mortgages, things that we tend to burden ourselves with in today's society, now there are eight categories of people that will be eligible for that zakat money, not necessarily the poor, as one would automatically assume. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, you know, the most simple form of charity you can give another human being is the humble smile. Moving on to that fourth pillar of Islam. Fourth pillar of Islam is actually Siyam, and this means fasting that holy month of Ramadan. And as I'm sure many of you already know, Islam is not the first religion to have that fasting, as Jesus, peace be upon him, he did actually fast for 40 days and for 40 nights. Now moving on to the fifth and final pillar of Islam, which is? Hajj. And Hajj is the pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca. Now to the second part of the gentleman's question, which is about the uh, burqa. Now what we do is we go through in a bit more detail about the various dresses that we uh, wear and the difference between the burqa and the burqa. Now look, we're, as I said, we're asked to dress modestly. We are, do actually share this with all the other major religions of God, the Christian faith, the Jewish faith. If you look in all them holy books, the dress code is to dress modestly. The gentleman said, uh, peace, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, how many wives did he have and how old were they? Uh, I don't know the ages of all of his uh, wives, but suffice to say that when he was 25, he married uh, Khadija, his first wife, who was 40. There are no limitations, so you can talk about jihad or you can talk about either the weather. 
There's no limitations. Yeah, okay, the gentleman was asking about the imam um, and, and was actually asking, um, can he talk about anything he wants to? The topic is actually chosen by the al Kaf, who are the Islamic Affairs Office. Islam is about the middle path, neither the extremes or the excesses that you will have heard of.